It is close enough to 6 p.m. on October 2nd, and I'd like to call the open the New Fame Select Board regular meeting and welcome everyone here in the audience and BCTV. Um, does anyone have any additions or corrections to I the do. agenda? You do. The Planning Commission was inadvertently left off. So oh. if we could add them under scheduled members of the public. Scheduled members of the public? Uh, okay, everybody's in favor of that? Aye. Yes. Okay, so it is done. All right. Any others? Unless you want to talk about that being. Well, if you want to, you'll have you have to bring it up. That's up to you. All right. Um, we have Mike uh, wanting to talk about the uh, Heritage Festival banner that we've all seen hanging in the trees. And um, so, are you in, are we all in favor of that? Any second? Favor? Oh, yes, I have. Yeah, okay. Long favor. All right, we'll add that, and I guess that would be new business. All right, thank you. Okay. Without any other additions or amendments, uh, we're going to minutes. All right, the minutes of September 18th, 20. 17 in a regular meeting. Do we have a motion to accept? Oh, a motion to accept. Any seconds? Second. All right. Is all those in favor of accepting those uh, September 18th regular meeting minutes? Please say aye. 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 All right. They are accepted unanimously. Going on to, to the special meeting on September 26th, 2017. <coughs> Excuse me. Make a motion to accept. In, okay. Motion to accept. Second? Second. Okay, and uh, I know you weren't here, and Gary was, but all those in favor, it'll just be us three? Aye. Aye. And do you have an abstention? <coughs> okay, moving on to road business, the road foreman's and road commissioner's report. Do we have that? Yes. Um, we started roadside mowing and should be done the next, hopefully this week, if he thought. Um, we're doing some road grading, spotty road grading to um, just stick it up before winter. Um, hopefully we can get everything smoothed out before it freezes. Uh, we had a meeting on Wiswall Hill with Mark Pickering from b Trans and Mike Dispatcher and about some erosion on the side of the road that's threatening the road. Um, Mark came up with a suggestion and we just have to try to work out a plan as to how to pay for it. So we'll be coming back at some point and figuring that out. Um, it's probably what a 30 foot section that we need to do, something like that, Mike. Yeah. 30 foot section? Okay. Um, Thank you. We had three trucks hauling for the town of Dummerston last week for about a day and a half. I saw you up there. And uh, as soon as we're ready, they'll be um, doing the leaf blowing in town and all our ditches. So we kind of trade off and they work for us, we work for them. Um, the 09 Sterling and the 13 Mac will be going to Tenco at some point in the next month and a half or so for some little maintenance on the Sanders before winter comes. Good. Um, we've met several times at the Williamsville Hall to look at water problems in the basement and the furnace room. Um, Christopher and Mike were over there this morning and you and Marion were there the other day, so we've, and I sent some pictures over to Shannon. Um, so at some point we've got to figure that out. I did call Steve and he's aware of it. Make sure they close it. Okay. Yep, and we need, we usually close it November 1st, so make sure that whenever you're ready, call them and we'll get the plumber to drain the water and stuff. Okay. Um, Mark Pickering also looked at the, I guess it would be the west side of the covered bridge, the abutment. Um, and Christopher looked at it this morning also. So I have um, Renault Brothers coming up to take a look at it just to see what we can do 
the concrete seems to be chipped out on that end a little bit, so you kind of bump mm -hmm. going on and off the bridge. And we just want to see if there's something we could be doing before it gets too bad. So I'll have a report on that at some point once we figure out how to go about it. Um, we never got, as of the time I left, we still hadn't gotten a price back on the, the striping for the white lines on the side of the road. They were supposed to have it by tonight's meeting, but you didn't have I didn't get anything unless Shannon got something. Oh. No. Okay. And the River Road Bridge repair is well underway and you're going to have a discussion on the report from the engineer. That's all I got. Thank you very much and I want to welcome you to your first select board uh, meeting as road foreman. Congratulations. Very well done. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jay. Are we going to be um, going over this? Did you have any questions or concerns about the report? Okay, all those uh, uh, all, we are going to be approving this. We accept it. So, uh, accept it. Thank you very much. All right, moving um, on to radio bids. Thank you. One bid? Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, the bid is from uh, SWNH District Fire Mutual Aid in uh, Key, New Hampshire. That's somebody coming through a radio right now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, this is for Newfane Highway. I don't really understand the hardware and travel and the different mobile Motorola, but can somebody explain all this? We're changing the radios in all the trucks to high bands as low band is kind of becoming extinct. Um, and we budgeted for it this past year to replace all the, because we have to do them all at one time since it's a whole new band. And that should be for the 11 radios. Uh, 11 radios you're saying? Yeah, it says 11 radios, all right. Okay. Uh, and a lot of other things, uh, including uh, the bidding and, and, and the antenna yeah. and so forth, yeah. The bid total is $14,880.80. And was this all budgeted previously? Not sure. It was close to that, but I don't. I remember talking about it. Okay, so it seems like 30 years ago, I was sitting right here in my truck, and there were 200 or so. 
quite a few different channels in there. So. Are, the, are these the same one, are these the same type of radios that the fire departments have? Yep. We budgeted 14. I'm sorry? 14 is what we budgeted. Okay, we budgeted 14,000, so this is $880.80 over. Um, if you want, we can take a look at it and see if there's something that is extra that they've gotten that we might be able to, to take out or I, I haven't seen it so I don't know what the, You haven't seen this? No, I would just you care to come up and, Would you care to come up and see it? I can just make them a copy. I'll make you a copy. We'll make you a copy. The problem is yeah. you don't have much choice. Right. Because you're doing away with the whole game. Okay, does anybody want to uh, have some discussion on this? I make a motion to approve this. I make a motion to approve this. So okay. that good. Have a second? Yes, I second. Okay. Uh, any, anyone have any comments or discussion on this? It's over budget? No? There's stuff in there like maybe we can take the radios out of the trucks that are in there to save the save the internal dollars. So then we'll we're taking the antennas off or whatever. That sounds good actually. Okay, so we have a motion to approve that. I'm not sure I got that back, but we have a motion to approve the uh, radio bid from, I don't have my back yet. Okay. Southwest of Maine for the fire district. Thank you. <laughs> for the amount of? 14881.80. Yes, I have a comment in the back. I will stand up. <laughs> I can barely see can you. Go you go have a full house. Can you hear me? I, you hear if me. you speak loud, I can, um, we can all hear you. I'm from the Village Enhancement Committee, a committee that's very aged in, in age and uh, hasn't been, been very active in planting trees. Uh, we have planted, I think, 45 trees. Um, may I, I just want to stop you courteously because right now we're in the middle of appro approving a vote on something. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh. You have to wait because they're voting on something. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. All those in favor of approving that with uh, uh, the road foreman on the road commissioner working to bring the cost back down to budgeted <coughs> amount, um, please say aye. 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 It uh, passes unanimously. Four zero zero. Thank you very much. Moving right on. Administrative assistance report. We are called to accept the report. Okay. Um, the treasurer and I attended a BLCT workshop on budgeting last Tuesday. There was some good information presented, and I brought back a folder if anybody wants to review um, or see the slides from the presentation. They would probably be useful more for the board than it was for me. But um, we get to look at those. Um, Green Lantern is preparing the 45-day notice <coughs> for the solar panels, which will be sent to all interested parties and budding landowners. It's just notifying them that they intend to apply for a certificate of public good, which then starts the hearing processes. Um, at the same time, I'll be working on the application to <coughs> amend the town's custodial care plan with the Agency of Natural Resources so that they have to basically approve us right. doing it. So, okay. um, On the Adamsbrook project, we received approval today from the Army Corps of Engineers to allow us in the brook. Um, the town really has little to do with the project. It's all being done by the state through Wyndham Regional Commission. So we're really just a party to the information, right. but right. it's good to know what's going on. Um, 
applications have been coming in for the highway crew vacancy. They're due on the 16th. We've got quite a few already. Um, and I suspect there'll be more coming. And for the sand bids, invitations to bid have gone out. They're due back on the 16th as well, so they'll be opened at the next meeting. That's it. Normally, how much sand do we actually buy in a year? I suppose it varies. Yeah, I guess it would depend on the year. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions or? All right. All those in favor of accepting the administrative assistance report? Uh, we have a motion. I made a motion to accept it. Okay. I second. Okay. Then moved and seconded. All those in favor of uh, approving that, please say aye. 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 Okay. Moving right along. Now, we have scheduled members of the public. Uh, you, were you scheduled in the back? Yes, he scheduled the third one down. He's third one, one down. Okay, we're getting to you. <laughs> okay, the recycling committee is first. Okay. Good evening, we need an everyone. update and discussion. All right. Um, I'm just going to stand so you guys can hear me. Um, I'm Johanna Gardner. You if you, you yes. Johanna Gardner, if you don't know. <laughs> What, you need me to sit? <laughs> you can move back a little bit. There you go. If you don't know who I am, I'm Johanna Gardner. Speak loudly. And I work together with Tristan Johnson and Joan Weir on the Recycling Committee. And um, so we thought we'd come in just for a little check-in. Um, we had a few thoughts about going forwards, um, finishing the process we've been working on for a while. And we had a, a question also, and um, I think I'm gonna, well, here's the, here are the three main items we want to talk to you about tonight. Um, the first one is, how is this whole process going to happen once we present to you our findings? Um, the second one was a little question about location of possible solutions. And the third one was uh, to show you a sample survey we came up with for residents. And I think I'm going to ask Joan to talk first um, about uh, site questions. Okay. Do you want to first talk about the charge to the committee in terms of what we're trying to sure. achieve? Sure. So we were charged by the town to um, look at all possible solutions for the town of Newfane um, for dealing with waste and or recycling. So it's a, it's a somewhat broad um, charge and um, and we have at this point five possibilities. To oh, yeah, that's good. But we're not going to present them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what? Gonna no, because we're going to come in with a more complete uh, presentation. But um, tonight we just had three. Oh, tonight three, three, three points to talk to you about. So. Okay, three points. <clears throat> You're on. Your okay. Um, when I started on the committee earlier in the summer, um, initially, uh, right around the 1st of July, the recycling bins here at the town offices uh, were carted away and um, uh, citizens in Newfane basically um, had a choice to get their own sticker at the Brattleboro landfill um, and take their own recycling there um, or hire a hauler um, and the hauler would take care of their recyclables. Um, and so the three of us have basically been trying to figure out how do we make um, first and foremost recycling um, convenient for citizens in Newfane. Um, and I think through the process of trying to figure out that solution, we've gotten more into um, some of the solutions going beyond recycling. So as much as our charge is really to figure out recycling, I think what we've discovered is that um, recycling could become part of a transfer station, for example. So when we talk about um, possible solutions, some of them are just straight up recycling and some are connected to a possible transfer. Um, one of the first things we did was to look at possible other town-owned land in Newfane to see if there was just a logical um, location for uh, putting the recycling bin somewhere else in town. And honestly, 
as much as New Fane has a lot of small parcels around the community, most were really unsuitable for um, our purposes because they were either very remote and far away from main roads, um, or they, they just really weren't, weren't suitable. Um, Close to the river. Yes. Yeah, I mean, some of them were the um, Irene sites that the town now owns, and it didn't make sense for people to drive way, way out to South Newfane to recycle, for example. Um, so, um, so essentially, I think that what, what we've come to is that the only possible site besides the Newbrook School would be the town garage. Um, on, on Deep Bar Row at Ro Road in Williamsville, and um, we've been to the site. We've studied this, you know, the site plans, the activities that have been going on there for a number of years, and we definitely have felt pushback from several members of the community that it it, it wouldn't be a good site for the recycling bins or a transfer station, and so I think that. Um, you know, before we try to make any kind of presentation, we really wanted to hear from the board on truly what is what is your feeling on the use of the town garage site as as a potential for recycling bins alone or recycling bins plus possibly a transfer station. Um, so I don't know if you wanted me to go into any more detail than that. I think that we're we're essentially just trying to understand this this problem and do as much research as we can and sort of come back to you with solutions that seem feasible. Um, and we just didn't want to assume things if, in fact, some things were completely off limits. So in other words, if the town garage site is something that we should not be considering, we really need to know that. Um, if on the other hand it's it's a possibility, then then we can provide you with information that will help to kind of move that idea along. So I don't know if we want to open it up for discussion or if we want to continue to uh, get to our. Well, points. I think it'd be good to discuss. But we also had, had wondered whether the town would be willing to buy some land. That would be the other possibility. Is if the. Um, the town garage didn't work, or if the Newbrook School, um, I've been more of an advocate of the Newbrook School. My committee members have been, oh no, you know, can't go there. Um, and I, I just say that because I think, again, we haven't like looked deeply into the possibility. Um, uh, so uh, those seem to be the, the two logical ones unless um, you instructed us to look at the possibility of, of buying a new piece of land, which again, adds to the cost and it's certainly possible, but um, again, we didn't want to get out ahead of what you all were thinking. Well, I can't speak for the board, uh, but I can just say make a comment that um, that it, it's sort of like hitting your head up against the wall and then uh, I was sort of hoping that you guys would have done that already. Oh. But um, one of the things that I, I did have a question about, uh, you mentioned that you studied the site, um, the site planning for uh, locating, locating it at the property of the, of the garage. When you studied it, what does that actually mean? Well, Did you actually go to the state and look at <coughs> well, uh, the what, wetlands? Yeah, and what we've done is we've, we've gone on site, physically gone yeah. on site, and walked around to just look at what is going on there right now. We've looked at a site plan that was used years ago when the town garage was built to see um, just essentially the permitting process for how, how that um, development was accomplished. We've looked into what would the permitting requirements be for various um, waste facilities. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have contact people, and we have um, information about what the town would need to go through if that, you know, was the direction we wanted to take. But we have not, um, you know, we don't know if there is room, for example, for a solid waste facility there 
because it would really would require some uh, professional services to um, you know do, to do some engineering and to, to essentially look at what what activity is going on there right now and you know is is there room? Did you have something? <coughs> yeah, I remember that uh, Todd, you had responded to that and Chris also um, as a road foreman and road commissioner. Would you want to um, tell them what you had thought at the time? Sure. Um, the biggest problem with the town garage is the traffic, truck traffic, loader traffic, radio traffic, going in and out of there constantly during the day. We haul gravel out of there. We truck gravel in, stockpile and we haul gravel out of there. So any given day you could have, I don't know how many trucks going in and out of there. Um, Wade Mashore, who is from VLCT, who is our insurance carrier, was there the other day, not on that. So I said to him, you know, take a look at this and give me your opinion on whether we should even consider these roll-offs. So we walked around the garage and everything, and he said that and I don't, he was going to send a letter. I don't know if he ever did. He hasn't yet. Saying see. basically that he has very, he's very concerned about having people in where these trucks and equipment are going to be going back in and out, in and out. Um, he said a lot of towns, if they do it, they put a separate driveway in, in a separate area for it that's fenced off. But the way I understood the wetlands from it before, we tried to put a, another access into that garage below it, kind of south on whatever it is, Dover Road there, or Depot Road, and they said because it was wetlands we couldn't do it. Plus our septic system sits right there as well, so you can't go over the septic system. It's a big mound system, um, but Wade was pretty adamant about he feels it'd be a huge liability for the town to have that going on when we're trying to do stuff with the trucks and equipment and all that stuff. Yeah. Well one of the th things that we've learned is and we've looked around at, at other um, transfer station sites um, in the area, you know Jamaica, Townsend, um, and, and Johanna went down to uh, Bernardston, Massachusetts. So we've, we've looked at some existing facilities to see how much space is needed. And one thing, a um, couple things that we've learned is that it's, it's probably a good idea for these types of facilities to be fenced, number one. And number two, um, um, it's likely that having some sort of attendant is a critical feature as well. Uh, so somebody there during operating hours, and I think the I, I understand your concern around um, sort of opening up the town garage site like 24/7. I think that that that's not realistic. I think what we would be looking at a Saturday morning, you know, from nine to noon, is when people would actually access the site for recycling and, and waste purposes. So it's not every day of the week. The only problem with that would be winter. I mean, if you get a storm on Saturday or something like that, then again, you're going to have trucks going in there more so, even more, because they've got to get sand and salt out of there all day. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. So, have you guys talked to, to Mike Fitzpatrick, tried working with him at all? He was talking about maybe trying to do a transfer station in this bed. Right. And I, well, I think that one of our options is a, a essentially a, a private um, transfer station that the town would, you know, directly work with, um, with, an, with a, a I mean, private individual. To me, it seems kind of sensible to try to have the town work with Mike with his pet and try to get something there, rather than, I'm just concerned somebody's going to get run over, yep. or a car's going to get backed into, or a little kid's going to be running around trying to see a loader or something like that, running up to the loader yep. and getting, that, it's just a huge liability. Whereas somebody like Mike that's up off the beaten path on off of Route 30, you can't see it, and, you know, he could, he's got a gate up already, so just a thought. Right. Um, well, no, as I, I said, about that. yeah, we've, we've talked, do you want to sort of outline sort of the, the five proposals we've, we've, we're tossing around and we don't have a preferred solution yet, but we're essentially, as I yeah, said. I mean, we can certainly save them. I don't, I didn't think that we would spend a lot of time discussing yeah, them tonight yeah. because. But I, I think it's, you know, for us, we, we could potentially sink hours into this process of calling state officials. And, you know, it's, it's like at some point, well, is there any point in pursuing the town garage? Because if there's not, then, you know, case closed. And um, Doris, um, back when the, um, <coughs> the dump closed, <coughs> 
this question was raised about putting those recycling containers over at the town garage site at that time. Now this was back in 94, I think, when they closed. And they opted to put them here. They had the same exact reasons that you're talking about not doing it over at the town garage at that time. So the concerns haven't changed since 94 about putting it on that site as what we're talking about today. It's the same situation. And they opted to put them here instead of over there because... Well, to be honest with you personally, I think it, it, it's kind of um, an, an accident waiting to happen if it were there. Uh, I thought that perhaps uh, if there were some wetlands studies for the opposite side, not opposite on the other side of the road, but on the uh, well, eastern yeah. side of uh, that, if there was enough space there, I don't know, and I don't know what the uh, if there's the wetlands there and uh, there, so is, space. there is space. There is space. It's it's that access. Access. That, but that's where the septic is, it's so we have to be careful for that. Problem. Then you have to build a road and You've fence it. You've got overflowing well that goes down through between the garage and the septic too. So. Yeah, so it does seem like it's not a, I mean, you know, I don't know, but uh, it seems like well, there's nobody, a lot of problems. Nobody there. has kind of gone on the site to sort of look at exactly where everything is and what all the needs are for moving trucks, you know, turning radius and, and all of that. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't need it. You know, and so it's, when we look at how much space is needed for recycling bins and even a transfer station, it's, you know, we're talking about half an acre. We're not talking about 10 acres. It's a very right. small footprint. Yeah. And so the question is, you know, is there room there or not? It means we, we totally get that there's, you know, conflicts there that maybe make it completely, um, you know, sort of unfeasible. And, and if that's the case, we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll give up on the site. But it's 140 acres, too. It's, it's not like it's just the pad where the town garage is. There, there is more land there. And so, and it. Yeah, straight up and down. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, hiking I think that's one of the things that would have to be done, is that I think you'd have to have a, a the, some kind the of The space that's cleared now, we use every bit of it. Yeah. It, so it would have to be a completely have different space. It would have to be a completely different space. And you get into the trails that the right. town's horse are putting the yeah. trails in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think I think there's room, though. I mean, we went sort of behind the salt shed and there was space up there, but I think it really seems to me like it's the driveway that's the it's, issue. Yeah, the I, I could, personally I couldn't see families coming with recycling and uh, then the trucks have to come in and get the sand and the salt and, and uh, go out and try to keep the roads open. It just seems like an accident getting ready to happen there. So I don't know if, if there's, um, you know, they, they do sometimes wave uh, certain requirements. I don't. I don't know if that's something to look into. Also, you to put a whole new road in. You'd have to put a road on it somewhere else on that property line. Yeah. And I can see the town. They you get a whole road to put a little spot in there. But for one thing, I just can't see the town why they want to be in the garbage business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty damn expensive for the thing. Everybody's got the garbage guys now. But I mean, and one of the reasons I don't say a lot about it because I have been thinking about looking at something in my pit eventually as a transfer and a recycling yard. But it's you know more of a convenience for the town new fan than that. I think you're looking for something more convenient than you're I mean you get into garbage recycling and everything else, that's gonna cost this town a lot of money. That's and you not, that's not what they say at the I mean Bob Spencer who's got a lot of experience with this. Don't town. cost much but money for garbage? He says that it's actually for residents it will lower the cost of getting rid of their trash. Um, so I, I'm not sure that's accurate. Okay. Mary, do you have a comment? Yeah, I do. Um, it's been a long time that we've been talking about this and we haven't we we haven't been able to solve the issue right now. But it's also been quite a while that Mike has um, talked about the possibility that he could have it on his property. And as far, I'm only speaking for myself, he, he is the only one that I know of um, during this month and month long process 
that I've heard being willing to step up to the plate and say, look, it's a possibility that I could do it on my property. So I don't know if you'd be willing to say anything at this point, but... Um, I talked to Bob Spencer two years ago about this, when he knew this was all going away out here. Yeah, I mean, can and you tell us, so. can you give us um, a little insight to why you think it might be really good to have it on your site? And well, I'm just why saying, we have like, a, like I said, it's more of a convenience for people who want to still haul garbage. It's cheaper than going to Bradford, driving to Bradford. Well, can you, can you describe what your property is like and what it would be like if it were up there? I know you have a driveway, but I've never been up there. So what would I find if I went up there? And uh, what would be convenient? Well, the is dirt, but eventually I'd pay the whole thing into it. And it's an old gravel bank that's getting deleted. So, I mean, it's going to be in something one of these days. And I thought a recycle yard would be good. You know, not just your plastic jugs and stuff like that. I'm looking at metals and woods and everything. And the garbage is a transfer station too. Where they bring it in, load it in trailers and take it away just like they do with Triple T. I mean, I think that, you know, clearly you have the, the space to do it. And that's that's fine. It's it's a private business versus, versus a town, right. you know, a government offered service. Right. So there's that difference that when it's a town service, you control the price. You you guys control the price for the residents. Whereas mm -hmm. when it becomes a private thing, you no longer have control over that. And if that's the that's the choice, so be it. That's fine. Um, I think there's also impacts in terms of mm -hmm. traffic. You know that it might. If you've got people going to the town garage, you have a traffic issue. If you have people going to his place, you have a traffic issue. So it just depends. What do you want to see? I think he's talking. You're talking about a bigger, a bigger thing. Well, maybe need tractor trailers, or I don't. I don't know what how big it might get. But right. you know, you have to take that into consideration. Right. So it's it's really this public private thing. Which one do you want to go with? So um, I mean, I just know from people coming up to me and ranting and raving about what is wrong with Newfang that we have not solved this issue. And these are people who live in Brookline and in Townsend. Sure. And just today, I had a visitor in the afternoon who was telling me that uh, they went down to the Brook. They live in Townsend, and for some reason, they were going to Brookline uh, this weekend. And that it was the whole place was just a total mess, where so much uh, garbage and recycling are piling up there. Clearly that it's not just Brookline people with stickers on their car, and that now at the towns, and they have the transfer sessions, I correct me. Um, she was also telling me that um, they now, and I don't understand how it's done, but they cover the bins or they zip the bins closed or something locked to try to keep people from uh, sure. getting in there and dumping. But, I mean, we, it seems like, uh, New pain citizens are really in, uh, some of us are really in a mess. I mean, I have a private hauler and that's a lot of money. And I don't know if I would want to continue that forever, but you know, everybody's had to scramble. Well, but, well again, you know, we hope to come in with a proper folder that has information about yeah. your five options that we have talked about. But um, I, I guess what I was, hoping to talk with you tonight was, like I said, about a survey, a possible survey. Because, yes, I'd like to do um, that. I yeah. thought we'd hand these out so you could see some questions that we thought that might be um, good to ask residents. I, to try I to like serve the them. idea of getting um, the citizens uh, concerned about this and getting feedback from them. Because to me, that's almost paramount to making any kind of decision. Um, I mean, most of us have our opinions, and we have what we do, what we're doing, what our neighbors are doing, we hear from. But when it get, really gets down to it, it is the people who live here that, I, that I'm most interested in hearing what they would like to do. And what I personally would like to see is Honing down, you said five possibilities, but you're going to be making three points. I would like to see it honed down to cost, feasibility, and um, 
location and you know if it's only three different ideas you know you can come up with those three ideas and with an agreement they're sent out in a survey with cost feasibility and location and uh, then those go out to the citizens and we hear back from the citizens and then we can actually feel I can actually feel I'm not speaking for we I can actually feel like I'm making a decision based on what the uh, residents of this town are interested in most. So, so that's I, I, what mean, I, mean. I don't know if you want to take a look at my survey before you. Um, Absolutely. Our, our survey. Do you I want me to read it? Um, or not? Sure, you can read it. Okay, this is a draft. Is that correct? Yes. It's a draft sample survey for Newfane residents to ask, uh, ascertain preferences for dealing with waste disposal. Now, when you say waste disposal, is this garbage? It could be. Or is this recycling? Could be, could be both. Could, could be, be both could or be one or or Okay. Could, yeah. The select board is considering. Okay. Vermont law requires that everyone recycle bottles, cans, paper, cardboard. As you um, may be aware, our recycling bins. Okay, were removed. We know that the state will also require food scraps to do, be disposed of separately from trash. Um, okay. These are the five options that uh, the five possibilities that you mentioned. A, leave people to find their own solution, which pretty much is what we're doing now. And um, I think for the last 25 years, we've been always driving our stuff down. That's just how we have been doing it. Uh, two, provide recycling bins convenient to Newfane residents. Okay. Create a municipal transfer station <coughs> in Newfane. And a look for a private entity to create a transfer station. In Newfane, and lastly, create a pop-up transfer station in Newfane. A pop-up? Yeah. <laughs> what you is a basically pop -up? invite a hauler to come oh. one day a week. All right. Take trash. <coughs> they have to also offer recycling, so it's it's uh, it's a an option that's really kind of falling by the wayside. It's not mm -hmm. um, not really profitable for haulers. All right. So this is these. Uh, in this survey, you will see the term transfer station used. Um, I think I can skip that one. Your feedback on this survey will help the select board decide which choice will be best will best suit the largest number of people in our town. That's what I want to know. Best take a minute. Okay. Have you hired a hauler? So you have questions here. Right. Have you hired a hauler? So basically, you're just getting feedback. If you answered yes, are you finding the services affordable? You're getting feedback about what exactly. e what all of us are doing. Right. Okay. Well, that's important. Um, I'm wondering also if uh, this to me would you... be the very beginning, uh, and then uh, as I see it, then after you get this information back, then you hone it down to prices, feasibility, and location, and that goes back, and then we have a vote. Or something like so, that. So, I mean, this leads into the other this part would, of my question tonight. Is how do you foresee the whole process happening once we give you um, our proposal? Are you hoping to have a town-wide meeting um, to discuss the options? When would you send out a survey like this, this if you were going to? Well, um, I think all of this has to be done somewhat ASAP. This is my opinion. Um, in order to uh, sort of time it for our town meeting. Okay, so you're thinking that the final decision would be well. You know, I'm just meeting? thinking. I, I, I'm not. No, that's doing fine. That's what I was here. hoping that we would do. Uh, so it just seems odd. This out. <laughs> if we really, you know, um, I just personally would like to hear back from the larger amount of citizens. Mm -hmm. um, it's. I think it's important to know what they're doing. But I think it's almost important to know what the preferences are. What would they, what would they like to see? Well, I think I... I didn't read it all. So so just what one question, now? though. Are you looking for the town to put this out by taxes? Or are you looking to do it so that people, when they come into that receipt <coughs> yard and they the garbage, out. they pay to get rid of it? I'm sorry, say that again? Are you looking to have this all put on like the taxpayers? So like, <coughs> if it's a $300,000 bill for garbage and recycling or whatever, we add that to the tax rate. Or are you looking to have the town purchase the things and then 
try to offset it by everybody paying to get rid of the garbage and recycle it and make it to level fund as well? Or? Well, there's an initial setup cost. For, you mean if you if we open the transfer station? Oh, well, either one. All right. There's an initial setup cost to opening the transfer station, which is in the hundred hundred fifty thousand dollar range. No, I would say it's seventy five, depending on the ownership of the land. So it's not that's not a huge amount of money, and then you really? have people come in to and you got a tiny, pay. You got somebody running it. Yeah. But it's going to get all the benefits and insurance. So uh, no, it's if they hold, if they're employed full time. If they're not employed full time, that doesn't happen. It's true. Yeah. They're a part time employee. I mean, I think that this place would be open hours. two days a week maximum. You know, maybe an afternoon, evening, and uh, Saturday morning, something. Like that. I think it would be helpful if you put down what you think it's going to cost to run this Absolutely. on your survey. That's what my thing is. Well, if you don't have prices, nobody's going to know anything. And, well, yes and no. I mean, I think the first the first okay. thing is to figure out how many people are actually taking their trash, how many people are happy with what they're doing already. That's you know, right. If 75% of their population is already happy, well, then we don't need to do anything. But if, if a lot of people are unhappy, then we have to do something. And then you go into, so well, what are the choices? And that's where you have like a public meeting because you can't tell somebody in a document like this all of the <coughs> ramifications of the different options. That was my thinking. You might have somebody who's happy right now, but if they don't have to pay $40 a month for their trash pickup and their recycling, um, they might be happier with uh, That's true. Yeah. driving it to where it goes. So. Yeah. One glitch that I personally see it, uh, with my neighbors in, uh, is that <coughs> there are some that cannot afford paying for the hauler. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and for whatever reason, they either can't drive or um, they just aren't reliable at getting it down there. So what I like to see is on that, if that's the situation, all of us be somewhat aware of these folks, our neighbors, and maybe volunteer to take some of their recycling you know, when we go. So we do that. It's easier if it's a new thing than if you have to That's true, the but still, we go, uh, you know, we drive it in, so we just uh, take other people's stuff. Too. And I mean, I agree to that, and that's why I was thinking that the transfer station, according to, again, according to Bob Spencer, we went down and had a conversation with him where he laid out how much it costs your average household who pays 40, yeah. so or say great. $50 a month, yeah. that's $600 a year to get rid of their trash, versus he figured a third of that if you had a town transfer station where they brought the trash, but even if it's half of that, it's still the savings for them. So that's a significant so amount of money for some To get back to you, I want to thank you all personally for this is a lot of work and you've been putting, knocking your head up against the wall for quite some time now. And I really appreciate it. Um, and this would, I think, be some very helpful to get some opinions from our uh, residents. And then after that, then go further. Right. So I don't know about the tab, like tabulation. Who, how are you going to disseminate them? Who's going to collect them and be in charge of figuring out? Um, you know. Well, can, can I make a suggestion? Yes. That um, we want we want to wrap up our work and we want to give you a uh, summary statement about each of the options we think are important which will, will provide the facts that none of us really are fluent with at the moment. And that, therefore, people will feel confident about the choices based on the hard facts that belong to each one of those, out of which then a survey may or may not be logical, or it also may be that the select board has a very logical, simple solution based on the set of facts and set of models that we can present to you. So I would encourage uh, our holding off on the survey um, and maybe tabling the rest of this conversation until you see that. Um, and then, then the conversation can be focused on what will it cause to do this, um, what will the impacts be, and how will it get managed. What do you, what do you all say about that? Um, I, I sort of like getting information feedback from the citizens. But well, it's kind of hard to get information if you don't know what everything's going to cost you. Well, this is basically, are they happy with doing what they're doing? If they're not... Well, nobody's happy about oh. nothing. No matter what goes on, he ain't happy with it. <laughs> I don't think you're happy. I'm happy. I'm very happy, actually. <laughs>
but not so much with uh, other people might not be, and I would definitely be outvoted. I mean, there's a take. Yes. Well, certainly having some sense of the costs That's across true. a variety of options will guide people's happiness or That's dissatisfaction, true. as the case may be. But it, it seems to me that overall, getting this wrapped up in some manner by the spring is imperative. I, I don't think I speak just for myself on this point, that we've got to do something and we've got to do it um, with all due respect to everybody involved uh, much more quickly than it, pers than it seems to be going from the outside and I am absolutely speaking as someone who does not understand the arduous process that the members of the recycling committee are going through. I sense it here. So the point being that I think there are a lot of people in town that really, really want to get this accomplished and, and get this done. I don't see how we can go through another summer like this. Did somebody else over here have their hand up? Yes. Um, going through the process. Can you stand of, up a little bit? Sure. Okay. Go, going through the process, um, uh, looking on our uh, looking at, for, as planning commission, and we're looking at um, doing a survey <clears throat> and running the costs and also the. Um, the efficiency of what, you, what your feedback is and how much you get. So I had a couple thoughts. One, to send out a survey townwide, 1,400 people, 50 cents a, you know, so you have about $750, um, and maybe you get a good response. Um, the other option might be to um, <coughs> include that in the survey that we're going to be sending out right. probably right. in November, if not before. Um, and uh, we will hopefully have that money through a grant. Um, if we do it next year. If we do it this year, it's, we have a planning commission budget we could do it from. That's two. Um, and the other is you might be able to get a cadre of volunteers. The most efficient surveys are on the phone. And if you got 10 people calling and you divvied up the phone numbers, then we could just find them in the phone book. Um, that might that would give you the best response for what people want to do. As long as the, the hardest thing though is to, to create an efficient, effective survey. Thank you. Uh, yes, you had a Yeah, the impetus for my make suggestion is that um, when we last talked, the goal was to give you the final set of information in October so you could begin the budgeting process for right. whatever solution seemed the most logical. And that's all I was trying to get to, helping you have the information so that you can think about budget implications for a solution. Right, well, we don't have that on the survey. Yes. Yeah, I, I would like to go back to what Mike was saying and some other people that in order to um, make a decision or a choice of what, what citizens can do, I really agree that it's very imperative that we have some kind of information or as details as we can about the costs. I think a lot of that is going to be bottom line in addition to um, a place where it's convenient and not out of the way. But what, so I think um, we would need to know what a private person would um, have to offer and what would that cost the citizens and how would, how would that be paid for versus uh, the town. And that's one of the options, Marin. So right. we will get to see that. I think this this survey is really, like I said, just a way of getting a sense of what are people doing now, what would they like to see happen. Yeah. If they're not, if right. it's, it asks, are you using a hauler? If you're not using a hauler, right. what are you doing? Right. You know, just to have some idea of what's going yeah. on. That's all. Just so you, it sounds like that if you did mail out this survey, you're just basically waking up, you know, you're, you're starting to establish communication with the residents, which is good. Absolutely. And uh, you're getting feedback from the residents as mm -hmm. to what they're doing. Uh, but maybe some kind of um, adding something to this 
that saying we will be making a uh, sending you more information in the future about certain uh, what we come up with based on the information we receive here and um, this is something that would be sent back to you to your committee because basically uh, that's a you know why go someplace else with it you need to have this information um, well I see this as actually being for you not so much for us because you are ultimately the ones who are going to make a vote on, on right. the... Right, we're going to make a we're, vote. We're going to present you with options and you take it from there. Um, so this was a tool which to which, please, if you want to add other information, other questions, absolutely. This is just a sample, it's a suggestion. Well, I think the idea of surveying residents, that's sort of the main thing that I think is important, is that you, you, know, you, you look out to the town and see what they want to do. I, I have a sense that, as you said, that this committee, you've been working quite hard for a long time, and it sounds like you want to see an end in sight of the committee, which I can totally understand. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have any money to run a survey. We, we don't have a budget. So we yeah. can't do anything. Mm -hmm. and, and I would just add to that, we, um, in order to really get better cost information, you have to make an investment in that as well. So, right. you know, we can give you kind of ballpark ranges of it would have what to say, these things, yeah, you know, range. may cost, mm -hmm. but, you know, at the end of the day, when you're talking about, you know, buying a piece of land and, and coming up with a site plan and doing engineering and permitting and, you know, like, that's, um, that costs, costs money to do and we're not going to spend the time as a committee if we don't know which way you want to go. So, you know, we're looking for the citizens to provide some direction and we're looking for the select board to provide direction. Um, you know, the, the solutions that we're going to present to you well, are, are the same solutions that every other town right. is considering. So there's no, there's no magical solution here. I think that if you're looking for the select board to make a decision as to what is going to happen, what what we're going, uh, what would be decided upon uh, for a new fame recycling center, um, personally, then I would need to know, uh, you know, feasibility. If is that possible? Is that affordable? Is that something that the citizens want? And those three things, I could not make a decision without knowing those three things. And I, so that's well, that's what this this is a this is a tool to find out what do they want. That's one. The the cost things. That's a bigger conversation, which you can't. I mean, I didn't foresee that being part of this survey tool. But you would you would have, like I said, a town meeting, because it's going to take time to present these options. There's documentation, there's pictures, there's, you know, there's a lot of information, so it's it's bigger than a survey. So. Um, yeah. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Ken. Ken. Oh. Ken. Just to say, uh, to use the words bottom line, I don't think anybody in town anybody really will be prepared to make any determination without a dollar figure in front you of them. You got that right. Absolutely. So I, I would about. argue that if the current recycling committee feels like they've taken it as far as they want to go, which is absolutely their prerogative, you know, maybe some, some of the committee wants to continue on, maybe other committee members come on, reformulate the committee and go forward with the charge to put together right. three proposals with three dollar amounts That's it. and then put um you know the survey together and go forward i think the uh needing to have a, a an approximate because there's no way you're going to have exactly the cost but a, an approximate cost to to take your recycling into xyz I think the whole thing is they're not really talking about cost. What they got to try to do, if you want to put this little the survey out, it's asking people, are you happy with this, this, right, and this, I or if you're not happy with this, they answer it back, yes, we're all happy, or we're not happy. Then you go a step further and start looking at cost. 
I mean, exactly. I mean, the thing is, you just do a simple form like what they've got here. I mean, all we got to do tonight is, I guess, if you want to put this on your websites and whatever else, maybe send it out to people. If they want to answer it, they go ahead and answer it. We get a look at it, it comes back, and we give it to these guys. They look it over. If there's 100 people says yes, they want to look into it, or 100 people say no, you know, it's more against one or the other, then you look at it. Now you, yeah, it doesn't really give but I mean, us... Uh, I mean, this is just, they're looking to see it this way before we start. I, I and they spend their effort trying to come up with costs and everything else. I mean, I, you guys... We, Wait a minute, I think, I'm sorry, but I think he had his hand up before you. Sorry. Just one thing. Jim? Um, in, in the survey, um, Tim Court, sorry. Um, in the survey, I think you should... Happiness is very hard to quantitate. So I think what you should ask is, how much are you paying now? And how much would you be willing to pay? Well, and then, then the select board or whoever can make a decision. Is there a demand out there for something different than what people are doing? Because we don't know if there's a demand. I, I, I call mine into yeah. forever, you know, and many other people do. Some people dump it, you know, I don't know what other, other people do, but you have to find out what the demand is out there in the community, and it's dollars. I agree. That's a good point, yes. So what I was gonna say is that this survey, please look at it before going too far, because it does talk about a lot of that kind of stuff. That's exactly what we're trying to get at. And again, we do have a lot of cost-related figures. We have looked at transfer stations. We have thought about what fencing costs and these various things. Some things we can't be sure of. For example, if this was at the town garage and some earth needed to be moved, how much earth would have to be moved? Who would do it? How much would that cost? Like, we're not going to go and take an engineer over there and ask them to do that because it costs something to go with an engineer. We have no budget. We don't even know if that's gonna happen. You see what I'm saying? So there's some figures we have. We can tell you how much does a trash compactor cost, how much will it cost to install it, how much do you have to figure on paying an employee. We can tell you that kind of stuff. Okay, but there are things that we can't tell you and we won't be able to tell you. And I can call the state and say, what permits do we need if we're gonna open a transfer station? What permits do we need if we're gonna have a recycling facility? I can do all that and I can provide you with the applications, but I cannot fill them out. Tristan cannot fill them out. It has to be the select board. So there's stuff that we can do to prepare you, to show you here's the things that you have to do if you're going to choose option A or B or C or D, but we cannot do them. That's that's sort of where we're at. And, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Can I yes, yes. Um, I'm going to give you a sample response. <laughs> and okay. that's me. So if if um, you're asking, have, have you hired a hauler to remove the trash? Yes, we have. Do we find it affordable? Well, it's affordable, but we give up other things, like we don't eat out a lot. You know, it's a choice we've made. So we pay for that instead of going out to a fancy restaurant. Um, if, you, if we had local recycling bins, would you use them? Well, I don't know if those would be free or not. So right now, I. I wouldn't know what to say. Um, you're asking who's the hauler and how much do you pay and are you happy? Well, the hauler is one of the main haulers around here. Um, how much do I pay? It's, it's at the end of the year, it's several hundred dollars. And am I happy with the services? Yeah, they're perfect, they're wonderful. Um, does that mean that I wouldn't change over if I found something for half the price? Um, I, mean, I would I, have to know, I would have to know, it, you, um, there's a question, if we had a transfer station in Newfane, would you use it? Well, I don't know what that would cost. By the way, we, we also um, pay $35 and we have a sticker for big things that we take into Brattleboro. So we have to, so the thing is that you're asking, and they're good questions, but you're asking how we are now. Well, given the circumstances that there are no recycling bins, yeah, I'm happy. I'm very happy. The guys are great. They're very polite. Everything is neat. I paid a lot of money. And would I choose to have something else if it was half the price? Probably. If, it, if the service was just as good. But right now, I'm happy. But so could we word it differently so that we could get that information from you? 
if you see a way to word it so yeah I would have to well it's about the money again what yes. we're saying it's all I'd so have to know well, so maybe we just need to change well the for sentence. example you're saying if we had a transfer station in New Fame would you use it then I would need to know okay much, monthly costs and transportation is going to be X amount and I'll say oh my god that's even worse than I'm paying now or wow that's a big bargain okay so, you, so, so it's, hard to, it's hard to say yeah. without the numbers yeah. yes. I make a suggestion rather than wordsmithing the, the uh, survey here in the public meeting mm -hmm. we just ask you all to put your comments down mm -hmm. and then give them to us so that we can then do that I like and that way you save yeah. time for perfect. the rest of the Yep. Thank you. Everybody in agreement with that? That we're going yeah. to talk, discuss this among ourselves later? Yeah. Thank and you come up with a decision maybe next yeah. meeting? Mm -hmm. Oh, we have another? I'd just like to comment that I heard this conversation back in the 1994 when we closed the dump, that it's the same situation. The select board looked into costs for transfer stations, joining with other towns, how much it was it going to cost if we put a, a truck down at the, what's now the old landfill? And other than the fact that the recycling containers went here, the this, this selectmen decided, let the people make their own decision if they want to hire a hauler or if they want to go to Brattleboro. It's the same conversation. Several years later, no, no, I remember I was horrified when the dump yeah. was closed. We needed a <laughs> So what are you saying? I'm saying I've heard this conversation in 1994. But what, what else are you saying? Anything else other than that we need to move on? The only thing I would counter, and I don't disagree with Doris, is that the state of Vermont has passed these recycling oh, yes. mandatory true. laws that every town has to deal with. Do and so you, you're, you're not exempt from kind of, you know, addressing those issues, and we're here to try to help. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but there have been some changes in laws. Lots, since of, lots of changes, mm -hmm. and it's getting more so. So it is a different, uh, it's a little different. No, but I heard about the so right. business of transfer stations. Do we do this? Do right. we do that? Do we do it? But the laws is absolutely right. The laws are have changed, and they're getting worse. Okay. All right, well, we need to move on. And we thank you very thank much you. Thank for joining us. And we will thank spend you. time looking into this, and we'll get back to, to discussing this. Well, on our next, uh, I mean, in depth, in our next meeting. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. We'll need to put that on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're moving on now to uh, an update and a discussion on the town office building committee. Okay. Here we uh, go. At our last meeting of the um, Town Office Building Committee on September 12th. Um, the Town Office Building has been painted on the outside. Doris, could you move could over you move one up seat? Here? Please. Please. Well, I just can't. speak a little louder. There, there are, uh, the majority of us here tonight uh, need okay, a little louder. Okay, at our last voice. meeting, we discussed um, the Mominy painters have done the outside. Yep. That's been done. It looks beautiful. We have um, inside is going to be painted um, late fall or early winter. This situation about the town office sign was removed when they did the painting. And there's the question about how that's going to be done. The, the frame has been painted and it's in the hallway. And the other part needs to have something done about doing the, uh, so the select board need to decide how that's going to go. Did you get a bid? Can you get a bid for that? No. No. No bids? No. Um, Gary Delius had looked into, because we don't think it's our responsibility anyway. Um, you decide how you want to have that done. He got a quote for like $800, but was going to be making a whole brand new sign. That's too much. Oh. There's been suggestions about painting the town office um, <coughs> sign that's there, putting several coats on it, and then putting some 
applying some letters. You know, that you can get wood. Three dimensional type right. letters. So how, what you want to do about that is up to the select board. How you want to, whether you want to hire a professional to paint that sign, whether you want to put letters on it, however you want to do it. Um, the next item do that- we, Do we need to, uh, well we just have an update and a discussion, we have no, what are we gonna be gonna have Shannon this? get some prices on repainting the one that we already have. Just doll it up so it, it looks like the rest of the building. And it's how much it would be for those, for letters that you're talking about? You know. um, we probably want to talk about that and discuss it. But you can, you can yeah. get, you can have your administrative assistant get some numbers and some prices for you <coughs> on that. So we meet once a month. She's good at that. Some of this stuff needs to get taken care of. Right, absolutely. So if, in our next meeting is tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? We're having We are, yeah. yeah. So. I know, I'm coming. <laughs> anyway, I think it, uh, Shannon can get some prices together. You have an administrative assistant to do that type of thing, so. And she does a but, good job at it. Doris, can I just add, I say we did not decide in our last meeting, or the uh, I didn't hear it decided whether or not we were going to have three-dimensional letters or well, it's, letters. Uh, it's we didn't. We yeah, didn't. it's not up to us to make the decision anyway. Okay, it's up to the select board to make the decision, not the committee. We don't have any, you know. Anyway, we just, just make recommendations, and that's my our recommendation. You guys make it fun. She get prices, okay. Um, the next item that um, you have, and I think you all have copies of the uh, loss control consultant action plan yeah. that the VLCT did back in 2013. Now, on that list, there are. 16 items. Uh, some of them have been taken care of. Uh, some of them have not. And I think that it, the board should have, Shannon ha was involved in this. And as you can tell, from, if you look at the thing, it's her handwriting that's on all these. She's familiar with it. She's familiar with what has happened, what didn't happen. <laughs> We're loading her up with work. No, right in this I, I talked to her about it before, and I told you about this. I know. I, I've heard you. I'm you know. there. It's a select board's responsibility to see that that 2013 thing is. So the ones with the checks have all been done. There's actually some that have been done. This is an old. That need to be read a copy of yeah. what I filled out for him when he gave this it to me. So there are some that have been done but since some then. Have not been done yet. So I could update it. Yeah. So I think if she had an updates it and checks to see what still needs to get taken care of. And maybe even have him come back and rework it. Yeah, he could. That would be a good idea too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next. Next. <laughs> um, okay. The committee discussed whether or not we should be thinking or working on an addition to this building. Yep. If that is what the select board wants, uh, should we be obtaining prices and so forth in things that we can present to the voters at town meeting? Do this, does the select board want the town office building committee to look for prices and stuff for in addition to this building. We have not made a decision on that. I have my opinion. I'm sure we all have opinions. We have to meet together and actually make a decision and we can put that on uh, the next meeting. But, um, one, I mean, yeah, our, ne our next meeting. Uh, so we will not have a decision for you tomorrow. But what, uh, one of the things, because we do need to talk about it, it would be great to have the town employees, the people who work here, actually give some feedback as to what they'd like to see here. I know we did that several years, years ago. We did, that, yeah. we did that, but things have changed since then. And we need to, and we have new people here and we need to have that somewhat again. So we could work on that. Um, 
to get their input. That's incredibly important to making a decision. But the uh, reason I'm at, we're asking the question yeah. is that we don't want to keep meeting once a month to realize, again, as the recycling committee, where are we supposed to be going? What are we supposed to be doing? Otherwise, we're volunteers, right. and we're, we're not. Let's just do it right now. Why can't we're we not just talk about to, it right now? Well, one of the reasons we uh, is that we don't have any decision. We have an agenda, we have an agenda to follow. You know, we have to go by the rules. This, and it's the town office building committee, and I'm yes, bringing so this. To is there a attention. decision? Is there a decision on that? Update discussion. Update discussion. We can discuss that. So what would you do then as a committee? Would you go out and start looking for how you gonna do it? You gotta have some like an architect drawing or something like well, that? Well we've got some, some we got some drawings from when it was done before. Right? We've got some square footage drawings and where things would be and so forth. We've got some of that already. So we can from that our thoughts were that an addition would be mostly uh, an office in a couple of meeting rooms. And the, this would be broken up into offices with walls. So that was our basic thought. I mean, it's not like, but if we sit down and, like I said, we have some basic things from what had been done before for the addition. I mean, if you have all this stuff, is this something you could propose us for our next meeting? We're, we're asking you, do you want us to bother oh, yeah. to do it or not? That's exactly, that's what we're asking. What we're asking. Do you forward. want us to bother to put all this stuff together or not? Yeah, I think it would be helpful. Do you want an addition or don't you? I think that that's the only real question that we have. Um, well, this question is being raised tonight, and I can only speak for myself. I, it's, First time I've heard this since everything was voted down a year with ago. The new and I have to have time to think about this. Okay. Right. I mean, I can't answer you right away. That's my personal. Okay. You know. Can you wait for two weeks for a decision? Well, we're going to meet tomorrow night. Well, I know, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm confused by something because we hired David Cotton to do. Yes, we did. Well, we spent have a lot changed. of money, things and he changed. wanted to put an addition straight out the back. That was a couple years ago. Yep. That gave me enough time to think about this. And right. It's 27 foot something wide. It's the width of the building. If we go out 40 feet or 50 feet straight out the back, we found out that the handicap bath, the bathrooms are handicap accessible. They don't need to get remodeled. It's not a big deal. It's basically a decision that. Does the select board want to do this? Do we want to go out the back? Yes or no? I personally don't want to spin my wheels and get prices and get contractors. If it's two years down the road, the price isn't going to be any good. So, it's but like... Fine. Whatever happened two years ago, things have changed now. They're, they're going to be different and, prices and, anyway. and we know how people responded the first time with the big building. And I personally would be irresponsible to not tonight, to tonight, when this is the first time I've been asked about it, I say, oh yes, it would be great. Or or I would say, no, I don't even want to okay. think about it. We don't have decision. Okay, we'll, 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 make, we'll, we'll meet tomorrow night and decide whether we dissolve our committee or not. Right. 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 Just discussion. Did you hear what she said? <laughs> Could you repeat it, Doris? No, I'm not going to repeat it. Okay, can I repeat what you said? Yes. Okay, Dara said, well, they're just going to meet tomorrow night and decide if they're going to dissolve the committee. Well, we're, we're frustrated. That's, that's, well, I'm, I'm that's sorry what I'm frustrated. Telling. Sometimes it is frustrating because uh, when I, just a little insight, when I first started learning how a select board works up close and personal, I, somebody asked me, how's it going? I said, well, it's like pushing a train uphill, a train that ha the engine is turned off. So it, you know, it's a slow process, but it it has to be a legal process. Um, I, I understand. Yeah, that. and we had, did not know prior to tonight that we were going to have to make a decision on whether or not to, tomorrow you could go forward with the idea of an addition. We don't have any kinds of uh, 
anything in, write, in writing or a drawing or cost or anything like that. We, we want to know if it's feasible to go forward. Okay. Just a moment. Yes. I think the question was, is the board interested in seeing a proposal? For an addition, was it not that you're is interested the board building in an addition? I heard that you uh, didn't. I didn't hear that. But if that's your question, no, you know, no. But Frank didn't say that. No. He said that we should know yeah. if we want to have an addition. On Girl, I, just, I think you should know if you're interested in hearing. Them. And you heard me, and I was not a select board person at that. that meeting. Doesn't Matt? You you had some inkling as to what we were going to be talking about. Well, I think that's part of the building committee, anyway. What's that? And we've got the thing painted. You're going to figure out what you're going to do next. The next thing we do is come out, figure out what kind of offices you want to put in here, and what kind of goddamn meeting room you want to put on the last end of it. So, so you come together with a plan with some sort of proposal that shows us, and then we'll go to the town people with it and see if that's what they want to do. So right? maybe tomorrow we should think so, I mean, about as you're still a committee, what happens in here. I would think it's that and the addition to it, that's what it's going to take. You're saying you're going to put this in the offices, for people to have offices, and out there is going to be more of a meeting room, maybe an office. Yeah. Well, that's that's why I said you just you're you're the committee. We've done the painting and stuff. We got the paint. We're going to have paint the whole inside. Now that's now the last thing is looking at your rooms and an addition. So and what you're saying is you want us to move forward. Well, as a committee, I would think yeah, that's yeah, what we want. Okay, that's, that's, all we, that's all we want to know. But you have to bring us some. That's all figures. we want to know. We'll put it up to here. That's all we want to know. We want you to stay as a committee. As a committee, we would like to recommend X, Y, Z. Is this? Uh, see what else we can do with it. And then bring it to us. <coughs> okay. End of discussion. So. Oh, okay. you go on and on and on. Yes, that's true. All right. Thank you very yeah. much. All right, moving right along, we have a discussion with John uh, Spicer uh, regarding a Spicer. South Newfane sign. You're on, John. Yeah, yeah. Really on. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up and stand up. Oh, I'm get up. <clears throat> I'll short my report. I'm, I'm requesting that the town replace a sign that was, I think, knocked down in a late spring storm, and Todd could have confirmed that earlier. Dara okay. may know how it was yes. removed, yeah. yeah. Um, the sign was, <clears throat> a little history, the sign was put up by the Village Enhancement Committee, formerly Village Trees. Village Trees was requested uh, by Joan Weir and, and, and traffic safety people about, oh, 15 years ago to change its name to improve uh, something besides uh, shade tree replacement and that would <clears throat> calm down traffic coming through our villages. <clears throat> Signage seemed to be part of that, and we, uh, Newfane has its own signs here. So we uh, <clears throat> went to our uh, grant proposal uh, people, the uh, Vermont um, Urban and Urban Forestry and Recreation Department to see if a mini grant that we had been granted could be transferred to replacing a sign or putting a sign in. Uh, they said yes, we used the $200 from that grant to have the sign painted. The sign maker, who used to live on the auger hole, uh, came and helped us plant the sign with the approval of the zoning administrator. And uh, on a corner approaching the uh, northwest side of South Newfane, coming into the village before the bridge, and uh, <clears throat> tough digging. It was brown river stone. <laughs> uh, that's the sign we wish to replace. Uh, it was done at no cost to the town. The repair has also been at no cost to the town because uh, I repainted what needed to be painted on the sign, and uh, WW Builders is contributing the post and the pressure treated uh, 10 footer that would be put in. So my question, I'm turning it over to the town to replace it at a location they decide is safer uh, approaching that side of South Newfane. And uh, where should we leave the sign to be picked up? 
The sign itself is in my barn in South Newfane. The post is at WW Builders. Um, so what is the wish of the select board? Well, it has something to do with the road uh, foreman so and the road commissioner. Right. You want to you address that? Yeah, the road crew will, will put it in. They'll put it up yeah, okay. where we'll, it was we'll, before. We'll like pick it up. I can't tell you. Uh, I, uh, Jay Wilson will get a hold of you. Well, I'll try to get Jay to yeah. bring the post over. I'll assemble it because I think it would be easier to, to do that before the post goes in. Yeah. Yep. Sign on post and then the town could put it in. Yeah. It'd be nice to get it done before foliage weekend, but it, that's tight scheduling. Sometime before the ski season yeah. sets in and those skiers come roaring down into the village. No, they can go dig a hole okay. and put, put the post in. There'd be no Fine. problem with that. Thank you, Craig. Okay, you talk to him. Good. I'll talk Thank to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much. Very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, moving right along, we have uh, Unscheduled so members of the public. No. Oh, that's right. We're adding the planning yes, commission. So sorry. It's okay. It's confessive. As you know, the uh, town plan has to be updated periodically every five years. Um, after we do this one, it'll be every eight years that gave us a break. Um, in order to do that, it's imperative that we have uh, considerable citizen input. Um, and uh, so to that end, we have, the Planning Commission has been working toward um, getting <coughs> another municipal planning grant that would pay for citizen activities, um, and outreach and mailings, and mailing, again, the survey that I spoke of earlier, um, of setting up a website so that people could go and answer the survey on their website, and uh, then finishing up and presenting the, hopefully uh, accepted by the populace, bringing the hearings by the, select, by the planning commission and then hearings by the select board um, and then publishing the new, new, the new town plan. To that end, uh, we um, came up with a budget of $8,000 that we would ask the state for. They're so happy to give us money this way. I know. Um, and in order to do that, we need a resolution from the select board, and we need, um, and so I'll read the resolution, so bear with me, it's not too long. Um, whereas the municipality of town of New Fame, Vermont, is applying for funding as provided in the Fiscal 18 Budget Act and may receive an award of funds under said provisions. And whereas the Department of Housing and Community Development may offer a grant agreement to this municipality for said funding. And this is the last whereas. Whereas the municipality is maintaining its efforts to provide local funds for municipal and regional planning purposes, and that means we have it in our town budget that we put money toward the planning commission, and that, um, or that the municipality has voted at an annual or special meeting to provide local funds for municipal and regional planning purposes. Therefore, be it resolved that the legislative body of this municipality enters into and agrees to the requirements and obligations of this grant program, including a commitment to match funds if the amount is over $8,000, which it is not. So up to $8,000, there's no match required by the town. Number two, that the Municipal Planning Commission recommends applying for said grant signed by Lynn Forrest, Chair of the Planning Commission of New Fame. Um, then it lists um, Carol Hatcher as the um, municipal authorizing officer. 
um, and Shannon Meckel as the administrative assistant to the select board. Um, we'll add later, at a later date, another um, select board member. But the um, time was of essence because this is due now. Um, the deadline is today. So, um, the deadline you, is today? Oh, so, so, I know. That's uh, can, can we see that? So, um, so uh, what I have in front of me is the uh, document where the legislative body, i.e., would um, affix their signatures there too, and I will take it and scan it and send it off to the state of Vermont. Yep. We got the application in in time. That was a box you could check saying we'll email the we resolution. Do, we do, do we need a motion for this? Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion. So. Okay. Second. All right. We have a motion. Sorry. Do you have any uh, questions about the um, about any grant? Uh, we went through this before with the well, yeah. with uh, um, what they call MPG for. Um, amending the town plan in support of the village center designation. We went through that whole process. This is similar, only it's bigger because it's the whole town plan. Right, and I did go on uh, your committee, your emergency committee meeting uh, meeting uh, and, and saw that you were working very hard with all your committee members and an emergency thing to get that out. And, and I, I will give kudos, we have, we have the best team ever. I this know. You guys get to you we, meet uh, in a really nice place. <laughs> okay. Um, we met. Um, we have uh, worked with the uh, committee members because people have different obligations at different times. Um, to meet when it is workable for them and to post that so people could join us if they wanted to. So, uh, but uh, Sunday it was two to five. Two to six with you, two to five with you, and the Sunday before it was uh, one to five. So um, we'll be glad to, and that's just for the ap the application for the plan. So. Okay. Would you be so kind to sign the by your name? And, um, we have a motion to sign this, and it's seconded. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It is four uh, zero zero. We are signing. And I have had uh, little discussions with uh, Gary, Gary Delius, um, who yeah. unfortunately can't be he here. He won't be here to sign, but I'm sure he would. Well, thank you for all your hard work. It is laborious what you've done. Who, who are you pointing to? I'm pointing to Angela Sandborn and Ken Esty. I know, we have two. I saw your names on, on your meeting schedule for yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah. It was yesterday that you met. The other two down, see what you're doing. Yeah. The other two commission members are Bob McCandless, uh, who can't be here this evening because of family reasons, and Mike Young for the same reason. Okay, here you go. Lynn, do you want me to take it? Um, I'll, I'll take it home, scan it, and send it to her. Okay. She doesn't need a copy? Okay. Um, I will need a copy, but we do need it. <coughs> Thank you, Shannon. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, now, unscheduled members of the public, do we have anyone? Nobody's unscheduled. Okay. Uh, new business. <coughs> um, it seems like. I know. Uh, where are we talking to Tim? I guess he's down here. All right, budgeting schedule. The last on the list. Yeah. Uh, you're the last. Poor Tim. We could move uh, you up. Could you move me to it. unscheduled? Sure. Well, yeah, let's let's, move, him up and let's move him to unscheduled. Yeah, Poor now. Tim, yes. I'm a little tired. I've been helping my daughter move for three days. Yeah. You've been what? Helping my daughter move for three oh, days. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we can understand. I, can I approach? Yes, absolutely. Sure. Okay. Um, just a couple things. Um, I <clears throat> sent a letter to the board uh, because of some concerns I had for the uh, grading of the road uh, adjacent to my property. And I would just, this is a, a picture of my property. This is the brook and this is the road. The road abuts my property about 1,400 feet. 
So what happens on the road affects my property because it leads downhill to the brook. Ah, leading downhill to the brook. Okay, and I'm sure you probably know, know this. Know all about Mike, do you know this? You do. Yes. Yeah. Chris trucked a bunch of rock up there. Right? I know. You came up to talk to him recently, I think. No. No? No, no I haven't met with anyone uh, since. I'm sure a couple of people have driven by. I can't take pictures of the of the whole property, uh -huh. but my big concern is the lower portion that butts my house, septic, and leaching field. The house is right here. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And the road runs up this way, right? Mm -hmm. And the road runs somewhere here. Okay, uh, and this is. Uh, this is the upper edge of the. This is going uphill. Uphill. This is all uphill? Yep. Okay. And. We're down here, that's the little bridge on Stratton Hill Road, right? Okay. And this was. This section here was a subject of a. Uh, um, <clears throat> Remediation after Irene, we spent about twenty thousand dollars and and brought in a lot of uh, stone to reinforce that to keep the to stabilize the bank of the house and the, the other buildings. And we had that plan approved by the Army Corps and it was discharged by uh, A.S. Uh, A.S. Clark. Now, <clears throat> I have a couple of pictures. My my big concern is over the last few years, the road level has been creeping up. My house is 15 feet from the road. I don't have a 200 foot driveway. So that when this goes up six inches, um, it, it, it affects where the water goes. And right now it's coming down this ditch, down my driveway, through my yard, to the brook. And I've been after this issue since June. The last week of August, now I can't complain about anything until something happens. The last week of August, the crew came up and they brought in truckloads of fill and the road level went up from where this was up to here, creating a ditch that wasn't there before that runs all the way down. We have to cross this ditch to get into our driveway. This is my house right here, so I don't have any more grading room. <laughs> and <clears throat> if I wasn't so tired, I would say more. But what I really request is that uh, a site visit occur. So I can't take pictures of it. Somebody's got to walk it. Um, I invited Todd on. He sort of deferred it to the superintendent position, which was just created just last week. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and, um we're coming up to the rainy season and the winter, and not much is going to be able to be done. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I are, are requesting that the appropriate people come up and let me show them 15 minutes. That's all it's going to take. And you can well, see we, where the where the sand goes. You can see the erosion along um, along this road here. These are there all used places. to be runouts coming down that hill before your house. The water used to go down towards the brook. Yep. Well, it, there's, there was a huge collapse up there after Irene, or during Irene. It probably cost tens of thousands, maybe $100,000 to fix because the, the water. Uh -huh. That's where you fixed it. Well, I fixed right? that before Irene. That was before Irene? Mean, yeah, that was no, that was. Seven. Oh, seven well, that was? No, no, that was the washout. That's and when it took the whole road all the way to the top of the Came hill. right down the middle, but this was Irene. And uh, the, the whole hill is clay. And it's got about a foot, foot and a half of ogre burden. And it's all clay. So a tree comes down, it rains, and everything slides down the hill. And this is, that's where they have that whole, that whole bank. So the culverts are important. The maintenance of the culverts are important. How the road is graded is important. If it's cut like this, the water's going to go over the side, and we're going to get erosion. So. Well, we had. Uh, I mean, I was planning. This plan, I'll come out and look at it this week, but yeah. for some reason, I just didn't make any eyes. Well, I'd appreciate it, and I. But I mean, we can come up. I, I know. Chris wants. I'll go up in the morning. Yeah. Well, um, I'll be around. Um, um, 
The problem is, Todd had told me that you want the road graded all to the other side. And that won't work in the winter because the trucks will end up in the ditch down at the bottom of the culvert. Well, but, but that's, the road has ditches on both sides all the way up, except in this area where there's just an embankment. So the ditch thing can happen either way when there's, when there's road on either, when there's soil on either side of the road. There's nothing except a guardrail on, on this side of it. So if you have stuff, a road like this, it go, runs down this way. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You are. Thank you. Um, so you know, if you look at it, you'll see what I mean. I'm not, I'm not talking about the whole road. I'm talking about part by my house, right? And I can't take the house anywhere. I can't raise it anywhere. It's been there 100 years. So, you know, and it hasn't been a problem until this year. So something's wrong. I just oh, want to look at it in a moment. You guys going to go were going to look at it. What, I was going to look at it last week. I just ran out of time. Can you, can you guys get together and uh, either tomorrow or the next day go look at it? Okay. Just knock on the door or beat the water. Thank you, Tim, for coming. Ready for more. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for being be patient right. all evening. Yeah. Okay. Okay, new business budgeting schedule. Oh, did, did you forget something? I gave you the. Yeah. No, that's for Gary. That's for Gary. Gary's coffee. Gotcha. Okay, thank I you. I don't have to let you take that. Okay, here you go. Tim, Tim, go ahead. Your new name is Gary for the moment. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, budgeting schedule. We're in the heat of uh, budgeting season. We're actually not heat. No, we're just kind of like it's on the horizon. But we do need to make a, ske a tentative schedule because it's coming up. So we want to look at our calendar as a board. And uh, I think um, I don't have my calendar. Oh, yes, I do. Um, I had a couple of ideas, but then you guys all need to, to look at your schedules and we need to talk it over with Shannon and um, okay so we are meeting in our regular select board today which is the second uh, we're not gonna uh, we have another regular select board on the 16th so we have uh, two Mondays left in this month that we could schedule budget our first budget meeting and that is the 23rd and the 30th no not those oh. okay. <laughs> Uh, right in the hallway. It's on time already. Okay. Alright. I mean, I'm just saying yeah, sure. the rest of the Any preferences? Uh, mid-January. Yeah, January-ish. I wouldn't schedule two nights this month. I'm sorry? I wouldn't schedule two nights this month. One. No, I, I'm just wanting one. So, uh, in, either the 23rd or the 30th. Uh, Marion says so she has something planned for the 23rd. Well, I have to be in New York. Sorry. What's the 30th? Is that Halloween? Yes. Oh, no, the 30th 30, is, the 31st 31st is, is Halloween. Halloween. We could all come in costumes, but no. Um, <laughs> you know what? October is such a big, busy, busy month, isn't it? With all that holiday. Uh, well, November gets yeah. busy too. So you want to you wanna tentatively schedule for the 30th? Yeah. Yes, and actually Gary should be back by then. Yeah. That sounds good to me. So the 30th it is, the same time, same yeah. place. Okay, the 30th. Now, all okay. right. Wait a minute, what? On these budget meetings, Yes. we want to set a time and not... Why did we go two hours last year? I think we're not yeah. about it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, two hours is unless, uh, 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 you know, unless we all start uh, pulling our hair out and having, so I guess having, I'll have uh, to be there. What? I said, if you all decided it, so I guess I'll have to be there. Oh. <laughs> oh, we didn't. You, you were, didn't you were running back and forth. Okay, before we decided it. No, I'm asking you now. <laughs> you what? I'll be there. You'll be here. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. All right, so it'll be 6, 6 p.m. on the 30th, and it'll be our first budget meeting. 
Thank you very Which much. Which won't really have a lot to do with budgeting because you don't have an audit and you're only three months into the current year, so you don't really know where you're going to be. That's what I said. Uh, That's why it's early. Well, the only thing early. I was thinking. Yes, no, is, it's early. It is early. I'm well, gonna, I'm, the sense, of the sense <laughs> is, is there's some things that we can actually do. You know, like for instance, we have a dedication of the town report. We need to decide on that. Why would we want to? do that when we're talking about figures. There's some other things that we could talk about. You don't agree? I, I think there's a few things. Um, yeah, there'll be a short meeting. Yeah. We get those <coughs> out of the way. We don't have to be, we, we don't have to think about them for the next meeting. All right, we're up to it. It's done. It's done. Get her done. All right, moving right along, we have um, Williamsville Hall. Anybody discussing that? I guess we are. Oh, yeah. Well, somebody's got to go in there and look at them all. And find I did. Out. I looked at them all. No, somebody knows what they're doing. And it's here, like, an, like a mold specialist. I looked at the mold and said, oh my gosh, we need somebody in here. Um, I actually emailed, um, actually emailed Steve today because he called me and asked who came and looked at this building when we had issues. So I sent him the name. It's Barnum Insulators. They came and did a whole moisture audit on and you know they were able to say where it's coming from. So do you know when they did that? It was back in 2012. 2012? I think I think have changed probably. Um, no, they did it on this building. I'm just on this building. Oh him. yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear this building. Okay, oh, yes, I know. I, yeah. I remember that. So I gave them their phone number. Maybe you can call them and yeah. Oh, building needs a lot of work. Yes, it does. Yeah, and and there's some kind of scary things going on downstairs. So <laughs> we definitely need an expert in there to tell us what those scary things are. And yeah, okay, good job, Jen. And so, who's going to actually be calling them? Will it be Steve? I think Steve was interested in calling them. Okay. So, well, that's or good. he was going to come to the next meeting and talk to you. Well, he wasn't uh, prepared to come tonight, so. Yeah. Because that building needs to be shut down at the end of this month. I right. think. So I mean, they could probably still come in and do find the mold and stuff. Even and just if at we least event, tell but. us what kind of mold. Yeah. What's happening to the beams? Those kind of things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good job. It would be nice if they we could get them in before our next meeting. And he might. I don't. I don't know. But. Can I call him? No, it's fine. Okay. Yep. I'm sure. He'll okay. Call. All right. Thank you. That's the discussion on Winfield Hall. Old business. Windham South uh, Municipal District. Waste Municipal District representation. And Shannon was going to address this. Yeah. Um, I'm wanting to discuss the recent decision of the board to remove me as New Bain's representative to Wyndham Solid Waste. Um, I don't know how this decision came about. There was no recent discussions about my serving. I had no prior notice that there was even a problem. Um, it was discussed and decided at a meeting that was for an entirely different purpose, held on a day that I wasn't here. Um, this issue was discussed in an executive session that I wasn't part of. I had no advance notice that it would be discussed and no opportunity to speak on my own behalf. Um, if this was a personnel matter, as I was asked to add last minute, then as the subject of that matter, I should have I had a right to prior notification. Um, if it wasn't a personnel matter, but simply an open, transparent discussion of a volunteer position, those have never been part of an executive session, then it wasn't warned correctly and it had no place in an executive session. So um, whether intentional or not, to make a decision about me while I was away at an improperly warned meeting really leaves me uneasy. Um, I was removed without warning or explanation or an appointment of someone else who is deemed more qualified or appropriate than I am. So does that mean that the board would rather leave itself unrepresented than have me there? Um, I was given an explanation that this was simply a decision based on 
the fact that the position needs to be held by someone who lives in this town. And this is inaccurate. There are three of us that serve. On the board of representatives, we don't live in the town. Two of us work for the town that we represent. Um, attached, there's a letter from Bob Spencer confirming this. I've served as alternate for three years without ever having a problem. Historically, it's always made sense for the administrative assistant to serve as it bridges the communication gap and allows information to flow better to the select board. It also gives me a heads up when there's issues with the state coming down that are going to need to be dealt with and need to be on the agenda. It just makes things a lot smoother. It also is a position with a steep learning curve. The laws are constantly changing, and to have somebody in and out of that position regularly just doesn't make sense. Continuity is important, and I'm asking that the board reconsider that decision. Okay. Oh, yes, go ahead. May I respond? Absolutely. Okay. Um, as a member of the select board, uh, I was I was away last week. That was September uh, 26th. September 26th. 26th. And I knew that there was um, going to be a meeting with select board where you would be voting on a particular issue. And so I spoke to several of the members of the select board and Shannon in advance saying I'm going to be out of town, but this is what I want to vote for. This is my vote. And Shannon um, emailed me. I was in New York for a medical appointment. And Shannon emailed me and said it would be really great if you could call in while the select board is meeting so that I can voice it to everybody at once. So I did, <clears throat> I did um, do that. I got off the highway, Hutchinson River Parkway, called Carol, um, because Shannon wasn't in that day. I called Carol twice, and we were disconnected, and then I was connected, and Carol, the town clerk, and she got Carol for me, and neither of us had a good reception. So we could hear each other, but with difficulty. And I said, I'm calling in because I want to um, voice my vote for this particular issue that I knew was coming up. And so I did, and then, um, and that was it. Uh, you know, and we hung up. I was not told that there was another issue coming up that would have, that you, I don't know if you voted on this issue to have Shannon uh, be excused from her position. But I remember that when Gary was here a few weeks ago and he had to go home early, we had executive meeting and we had to have two meetings and we told him in advance what it was and he was willing to stay for that. If I had been told that there was gonna be a second voting on, on another issue, um, I certainly would have wanted to have that opportunity to vote. I was very, very surprised when I came home from the, my trip and I turned on the computer and I read uh, the decision that was made from the select board that um, Shannon is now no longer the um, representative for new fame and thank you very much for your years of service. I mean, I was shocked. How did this happen? Is this part of uh, I don't consider this part of a commitment to open meeting laws. When did this subject come up? I never heard about this. I've never had a conversation at a, as a select board about should we keep Shannon? Is there an issue about Shannon? Um, how did this happen? I'd like to know. And well, basically, did you want to explain that? Well, I well, well, think well, the thing was, I mean, it was brought up that. It was a volunteer position, this was. And how it was, it was brought up that Shannon's been getting paid. I don't know if she has an offer. Nope. With fuel and whatever and stuff I've like that. I put in mileage once out of five minutes. And um, while we said this, everybody else has done it. It was a volunteer position. And that's the way it should say, I guess. Because well, we have no budget. Well, then he came to me and said, don't put mileage in anymore. 
and it's up to you if you want to continue. But I knew nothing about it, that it was even an issue, so how could I even speak to it if it was done behind my back? Well, it, it wasn't necessarily an issue that was directed at you. It well, was, but it, it wasn't no, directed no. at me enough to answer to it. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't an issue about uh, your work or anything like that. It was an, basically, it, the discussion was to have a uh, community, a person who lives in the town of Newfane. I know that you, there are other people that uh, don't live in their towns that, uh, you know, are a representative. And, uh, but it was basically surrounding the idea that it is a... I, mean, I don't think it's something we did on our own. Somebody brought it no, up. No, somebody brought it up and we started talking about it. Not how legal. It was brought up to members behind the scenes, which means it, it wasn't brought, brought up to an open meeting. saying not the whole board. It doesn't matter. Well, if it was brought to a board member, member it. and then you go into a secret meeting to talk about it, that's not legal. Meetings, no, it, it, was it was not secret meeting. Was this, it was not warned. It was not properly warned. It was, if there was it, an issue, it needed to be brought out in an open session so that at least the public had a right to know what the hell you were talking about. And they didn't. As um, a former representative for the William Solid Waste Management District, um, it, when the town first joined the Solid Waste Management District, one of the select board members was the representative. It was um, Eileen Houston. I was the administrative assistant. I served on that committee um, for 12 or 12 years, I think. And I was the um, chairman of that committee, William Solid Waste Management Committee, for probably half of those 12 years. I never put in time or mileage or anything like that. I just did it as a citizen from Newfane, <coughs> even though I was the administrative assistant. Right. It was important to the board to have someone that would be that could go to the meetings and bring them back the information, not have somebody volunteer who didn't come to the committee, who wasn't as uh, closely related to what's going on in town and understanding. The solid waste district is a impo very important that the town be represented properly there. And it worked for a long time, for like I said, the 12 years that I was on there, the board had a direct connection. I had a direct connection with the board so they could understand what was going on because things change rapidly down there and you've got to be paying attention and you've got to have somebody that's going to bring the information <coughs> and let the select board know what's going on. So I think in knowing that Shannon has gone there because she's been a um, alternate and now she goes to the meeting, she <coughs> told me about how she is, I think at first she may not have been necessarily interested but I think that the more she went, the more interested she got, the more she participated, because some members of the different towns don't necessarily participate. And she's a fairly new member to that committee, and she has participated. <coughs> she has the respect of the people on the board. She has the respect of Bob Spencer. I know from talking to these people, just because I go in to visit once in a while, you know, <laughs> when I go down to bring my trash and my recyclables. So I, I think that it was really, um, whoever you talk to or whatever, I think sometimes you have to really, if somebody makes a comment to you, it doesn't mean that you have to change everything. You should look into it before you make a decision like you did the other night in the executive session. And I questioned about the open meeting law, about whether that, what you did was correct in the first place. Shannon is going as a volunteer. She's not, I mean, and it helps as that she's administrative assistant, but I really question the whole process that you used to even come up with such a decision. I don't think it was right for the town, and it's not benefiting the town. 
So in other words, everything you want to know, does anybody want anything you want it all brought out first before we went? That's why they did it in executive session, you know, they didn't want to bring it out. The subject. Huh? The subject wasn't even born. You have to let you know what you're talking about. That's why she had to put it as personality. No, that is not a reason, and it says right in the law. But I mean, do you want all of everything brought out in front of everybody first? Personnel issues is not a legal reason to enter into executive session. It is very clear in the law. You have to give the public the reason, the topic that you are discussing, like the representation to Wyndham Solid Waste Management District. You have to at least give the public the topic that you are discussing, and that didn't happen. And also, if you are going in to speak about somebody who works here, you have to give them the right to come in and speak for themselves. They have a right to be part of that executive session. I was not given that right. Uh, even though you were, uh, your role as a volunteer, it doesn't matter. Is not has you nothing to do. Excuse me. Let me, let me ask a question. Let me issue. ask a question. So it was one or the other. Let me ask the question. Uh, even though your role as a representative is a volunteer role, then it, it hasn't has been an executive session. If it was just speaking about a volunteer position. There was no but that to you, be in there. Oh, okay. But that you work here, so I didn't So one or the other, you have to pick one. And if it was a personnel issue, <coughs> and you're calling it that, then I had the right to be a part of it. And I had a right to prior notification that you were discussing it. If it wasn't a personnel issue, and it was a volunteer, then it didn't have a place in, per, in so executive perhaps session. So perhaps it could have been, exec should have been okay. an executive yeah. session. Yeah. So it's one or the other, but either way, okay. it was not well, that, that's that's good to know. And uh, perhaps we should then, um, what do you think we should do about that? Can I say something? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Oops. Sorry. We're, we're talking about very important things and mm -hmm. laws and rules and regulations about the select board and open meeting law and how, um, how one has to deal with going into executive session and what you have to announce before you go in. And that's very important. And I feel that they, we were not following, or the, the group was not following open meeting law. And it wasn't going through it properly with um, executive session uh, without announcing it. In addition to that, or aside from that, I was very, very, I was really shocked and very sad that we are a group of people who work here together and we respect each other, I think. And this is a small group with five select board members and we have Shannon as our administrative assistant. How come she didn't get the courtesy to be spoken to about this? How did this happen out of the blue with her having no idea that all of a sudden she was being dismissed. Well, I don't think it was all of a sudden. She well, was I've being, never it, heard. It was a discussion. It was, a sudden. It was a, uh, and it just came up. It wasn't really even, um, well, we, we didn't have this planned. It just I know, came I know. Up. So it therefore was a you could talk about it. It was a discussion, what? and then it came up, and, um, and it, it you know, like so talking about it is so one thing, but then you decide well, that's we're it. We're under the impression she'd been paid for it with a mile engineering else, which all the rest of the people had. No. Because I think didn't so. Why didn't you say we have to talk to her about no. it? I had to make a special trip one time. Which I thought you, Carol said it. That I she like, but you know what? It. Here's the biggest point of this whole thing. Had I been talked to about it, I could have answered that question, but I wasn't oh. given the opportunity. So you went on assumptions and made a decision. Well, the I have about I, something that wasn't true. I have to say that when you first accepted the role as a representative, I was talking to you at your desk one day, and I asked you, "Are you uh, taking hours for that?" And you said yes. No. And this was several months we ago. I don't take hours for it. I'm salary. I don't get paid extra for uh, extra hours. Well, I meant time. No. On your hour, on your forty hour a week, no. is that part of your time? And you said yes. No, meaning it's part of. And my then I just, I just asked you a, a little while ago um, if you are getting mileage for it, and you said yes. No. If you look, 
I had one special uh, meeting that I had to make I just, extra. I'm not looking. I'm not going around well, looking look. at your. I can, but I'm not. And I just actually, in conversation with you, asked right. you those in a questions. Very, I'm sorry, and I'm just going to say it like it is. In a very sneaky way, asking little questions, and then all of a sudden, this comes about as a motion, which completely blows me out of the water. I, I don't see well, where you think that was right. I'm sorry that you uh, felt like uh, you so there's been out of the one water. occasion where I had to make extra trips that I charged for mileage because it was during my regular work hours that I had to go down. Right. So yes, yeah. I charged. I really think we ought to go. I never have. I think we ought to go on and make no. I want to no. I want to ask some okay. questions. When you say that um, Shannon charged mileage, is it a legal thing to charge mileage? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. If you choose to. So, Thank Mike, you. when you say, well, Shannon was Just don't look at Mike. I mean, Gary's one that said that. No, no, I'm saying, no, you just. I said that she, why I went on the thing was, everybody else has done it, volunteered. Right. Everything's been volunteered. It's a volunteer position. There's nothing in the budget for this thing, set up for this. No, but I'm asking. And I said that that's uh, my, why I made my decision, is because everybody else has been, Johanna, her, everybody else has done it all these years for nothing. And so have I. And I said, so she's, she is too. And I said, if she's getting paid for it, we're going to no. have to end the situation. No, you wait. Can, can, I, I, can I just finish? You, what you said, or my understanding just a few minutes ago, is you said, well, Shannon charged mileage, but nobody I asked said, her if she charged mileage, and I asked her if she'd been paid for it. I just did right me. now. And just like, now. I said, have you, you been paid Melissa. for this, or did you get paid mileage? One time. I and that's what I asked you. When I, other than that, Carol said she talked to you, I've and you think what you put in for your time, and you had mileage. Ago. I know what I just asked you, so that's what I'm telling you, and that's what I heard. I have never put in my hours. That's what I, that's what I heard, too, is what she and told And that's us. what I well, heard. You can hear all you want. When I asked you once ago. I have never put in my Okay. Time. Well, it's a misunderstanding. No. It, can, it we agree, misunderstanding. Uh, can we agree to that? No. Because, okay, well. I don't. I don't call it a misunderstanding. I, you could have looked at my timesheets at any given time and looked well, and seen. Perhaps, no, no. perhaps we should start looking paid. at timesheets. And, and maybe that would be important so we wouldn't have to have, uh, have a, what I would call, a misunderstanding. And um, so I think that's probably something that we should start doing. Well, I think we're going to start bringing in anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. We're going to have a whole thing on it with a whole deal and everything for everybody. Okay. So. And go so through all your we'll job doing. descriptions, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we know how everybody's seen. And uh, I think we should have this discussion again about with you present. So I offered that for you this time, and you said no, you didn't want to come in to an executive no, session. No, I said I didn't need an executive session. Okay, it doesn't need, need to be okay. one. So we well, are I don't want discussion. and need, I'm sorry. But I don't need it. Uh, I offered you that that choice to come into an executive session and state your case and we I don't can then need an executive session. I want to be part of a discussion, not an executive session. There's okay. no need for it. Well you are part of the discussion now. And now I am. Okay. So, so you don't need to rehash it again. Okay. All right. So Well Shannon made a request that we going to I think we need to talk about it. What do you think? What's that? You, uh, Shannon's asking for us to. What's your request? Shannon would like to speak. Oh yes. I don't know the details, but I'm learning them as I listen. Um, but I, I would caution against um, overlooking uh, the the very big picture, which is uh, from my lights. From my observation, Shannon's extraordinary contributions to the town of Newfane yes. as an employee. None of us are saying she does not. Well, I but I'm I'm just saying as from where I'm sitting, yeah. you know, I, I just would want to underline the point that from my observation, and I believe I once again speak for others, that Shannon's contribution to the town of Newfane is incalculable. Yep. Extraordinarily valuable. And so I wouldn't want to, at least for me, I, I would caution against, you know, a tenor of conversation or a course of action that would make it more difficult to um, make it more difficult for Shannon to 
continue the great work that she does for us and and whatever accommodations uh, could be made you know whether it's on procedural norms relating to open meeting law or whether it's the details of her representation um, you know whatever that however that gets factored out I would very much want to make sure that you know her contributions are not overlooked in the midst of all this and and certainly just on a side note I mean I'd rather have somebody that really understood the issues uh, and even if she doesn't live in New Fane, then to have somebody in New Fane and attend sporadically uh, in keeping with what I think Doris was saying. So that's just, as a member of the public, that's how I see it. Well said, Ken. So, does anyone have a uh, motion or any kinds of things that you would want to do or any when, further when's discussion? The next meeting? Hmm? When's the next meeting for? The next meeting is, uh, whatever the next meeting is. What are we doing? I don't know. The next meeting, meeting is in what? two weeks. Hmm? What? No, waste management. <clears throat> A waste, waste management meeting. When is the next meeting? The 12th. I know that you had said, you had mentioned that you were interested in Oh, I said there was no position. beginning that would go down. I'm not looking to do the whole position. I said I would take, I you wouldn't mind going. You'd be an alternate? The alternate, alternate is still vacant. Would you would you be interested in being an alternate? I'm just saying though, are we, is it so you can put her back in tonight or not? Yes. Why not? I would uh, make yeah. a motion that let yeah. to have Shannon continue with this position. Um, I'll second it. Okay. So we have a motion that Shannon will re uh, be reassigned to her position uh, as a representative, and we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? All for all those in favor, say aye. Uh, uh, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank now, you. Now that we're on the discussion on this, do you want to be an alternate on that? I have no problem going down sitting in some of the meetings. I think that, that would, would be, be great. great. So we have a motion yeah. to... Uh, Mike, be an alternate for the... Yeah, yeah, I second. The alternate can go down and sit. It's just that yes. there's a vote. Yeah. If I'm there, you can't vote, but you sit and... Let's so we and have see. a motion uh, that, uh, to assign... Mike Fitzpatrick is an alternate to be an uh, alternate representative for the town of Newfane at the Wyndham Solid Waste uh, District. And we have a second. We have All, a second. Yeah, we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There you go. So now we have, well, we got a bonus now. All right. We have Shannon uh, as our regular representative, and we have Mike Fitzpatrick as our alternate. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So I think that's the end of the show. So are we uh, ready to adjourn? I need a motion. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. We are yeah, ready to good. pay orders. No, no we don't have that. any correspondence. You have old business you need. Oh, gosh. We have one. Actually, you know what? All it is is personnel evaluations, and we're just going to report that the zoning one is completed. Yes. But and mine will come. OK. And the, uh, I. We have the zoning administrator, but we can't make it public. But it is finished, it is and I think every, uh, I think the um, board members should take a look at it. Everyone should, should be in so look in the by. file so that you're aware of the um, evaluations of this town's employees. So we have finished the zoning administrator. Thank you very much for your work on that, and both of you. Yeah, and so we're moving right along. Only other thing we didn't discuss is that letter we got from these guys. So, what letter? The dude over the bridge. We did not discuss that. Um, I mean, I know it's very scary, but we're trying. Why is it scary? Well, well, there's no way. There's there's no way we can read that. That's no, why it's scary. Oh, the banner. You wanted to talk about the heritage banner. Heritage. Oh, the banner. The heritage yeah. festival. Banner. Remember, you said it? you wanted to talk about that. Okay, you want to bring that up? Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, I think people should know. I mean, I think it's damn ridiculous that they can't hang that banner across the road up here. Right. It's got it stuck down here under trees on somebody's lawn. <laughs> oh, no. that, I mean, it's you, very embarrassing, actually. Well, you can't well, even, but no, but I mean, how many years have they had that banner? Absolutely. You know what I mean? They did the same thing to Wardsboro this year with the parade. Yeah. Really? And I, yes. I mean, that thing is 60 some years or whatever it's been. Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, the state, somebody from the state comes along and says, well, you can't have a banner across the road anymore. 
Now I want to know how high the road state actually owns. The limits are 13.6. I mean, are they 15 feet? Let me hang a banner above it. I mean, if it was me, I'd hang a banner across there anyways and let them come and take it down. I mean, I think it's damn ridiculous. I mean, this thing's gone on for years. Right. And something as simple as a banner, what hurts it, though? Right. It doesn't hurt. Did you see the new sign they made, though? Alex? Yes. And the comment? To, yes. to, to, Just the last day, it's all right. You know, because they couldn't do the banner. But the banner, I mean, always oh, I know. gets banner's people's traditional. attention. traditional. I think, wasn't it Market Stearns that, that would paint yes. that banner? Yes. I mean, that, that means something right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're doing this throughout the whole state, all these old programs and stuff have gone on forever and ever and ever, you know. I think they're out of touch. I mean, it's, I think it's somebody ought to be in touch with the state and ask them why they're doing it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think the state of Vermont's got better things to do than worry about that. Right. I mean, it's up there for what? Uh, two two days. days. Most? Oh, three days or whatever. Well, it's a couple of weeks ahead. Is it a couple Even of weeks? Even if it's a month, you know, I mean, yeah. Who cares, you know? I mean, yeah. it's like right. this. I can't imagine anybody's ever been killed by a banner falling on them. Like, what is their reasoning for a, a not having <laughs> have to ask the state? Oh, well, well, I don't even know. They, they didn't statute. give any reason. They didn't they give just a reason. Sent a they sent the statute that just yeah. says it's illegal, but there's no real reason behind it. I mean, I'd like to see the real reason for it. I mean, I think it's all petty, kind of petty that they've all since started chasing it. I'll see if I can get a copy of the letter. Can we put the church? banner over West Street legally? I thought about That's that, what too. We were, we were walking up there today, we said, hmm, wait a minute here. Why can't we put it over West Street? Kind of close to Route 30, but really not on Route 30. At least right there at the entrance. At the West entrance, Street. you got it. Right. right there where you go up? You could. You could go up. <coughs> okay, how about that? How about that for the road crew? <laughs> no, no, no not the road crew. Somebody. The, the, the festival could, I mean, they had to put Oh, the that's other, true. They, they had could to ask the, the church. Yeah. And, and tell them that that would be legal. I'm going to tell them. Yeah. So <laughs> would one of you tell them? I will. You will. Okay. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> the state took down. All right, All we'll get around that. Page. We'll get around that somehow. Yeah. All right, I think that's, isn't that the end of this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, we have to do that now? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> we have the letter from Matt Belden. And have we all read it? Yeah, I don't think there's any way they can raise that road two feet in a matter of it. So, I mean, the whole thing's out of the picture like that. Well, you know what? Roads are, and, and advice about raising roads is for the road foreman and the road commissioner. Is no. this even fe feasible? Do we want to do it? Well, no. No. But the, what I'm wondering is, though, because see, when I went down there with them, when they were pulling us all apart, um, he told me they were going to raise the, the bridges going up a foot and a half, higher than the one that's there now. Why? Well, they used three beams instead of the four or five or six, whatever it's in it, so they got a higher beam that's supposed to carry more weight with a three. And when we originally talked about it, that day we all met down there about looking at the bridge, we were talking four to six inches that we thought we might be able to raise it and make everything blend into what it is there now. But what I'm thinking is now they're coming back with something like this, like it's an excuse, you know, they got a hump on the bridge. If they don't do it, I mean, it's almost too late where they tore the damn beams out. It ain't too late. I guess they could always have to go get new beams. But is that going to postpone and bridge that much longer? No, oh, yeah. You know? But I, I just tell them there's no way they can raise that road two feet. So nobody can use the road? Well, if them beams ain't going to work, they may have to go get some new ones. Sooner than later. I mean, it's just like we were just talking today. They should have never pulled that thing apart before this weekend's coming up. That road gets a lot of traffic mm -hmm. through that fun this weekend. Yeah. Oh. You're going to see cars packed over we pass the school before this is over. I mean, um, what happened with emergencies? But the whole thing is, what I think is, well, you got to answer this letter sooner than later, too, is this isn't going to work. What's their next alternative? Well, now, they've already got the beans. They told me they were coming either the 3rd or the 4th of October, so at their place. But if they're going to make that road so high, that bridge, I mean, in front of Stevens's house, 
They'd drive, be like a thing down into the thing. I know, we had Carol call me too, Carol called me and then I guess Otis was talked to by um, Todd about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I was looking at it the other day when he said 14 inches. I cannot believe that this is a, such a mess. These are professional people. They should know this before they go start ordering all these beams and all these other things and realizing that it's not going to work. Yeah, it should have had the same beams with that in it. You That's know, it. Same why? Why? Or same height. They couldn't have done nothing else. But I mean. So we're between a rock and a hard place. So what are we going to do? And I, I look at you guys because you well, guys I think have you something to do with on roads. This letter, tell them they can't raise that road two feet. Right. That's what I'm thinking. That that sounds. If they have to get new beams or what? But if they have to get new beams, they still got a timeline to have this thing done by January, November first. And did they sign that? Did they, they sign, did they sign a paper? They signed their bid. We're okay. So, um, what would be the worst thing that happened if we asked them? Not just trying to raise the road two feet and think yeah. again, well, they want another $74,000. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, right. So, what would be the worst thing that happened if we told them that they have to take those beams back and they'd have to get the, the, the I mean, if nothing worse come to worse, it's going to be... Five months getting the beams, now they'll have to throw a temporary bridge on you. Daily bridge or whatever. Do you think that's a good option? It's the only option. There's no other option. Okay, so who's making a, who's making a motion? Yeah, you better write this one down specifically. I'd make a motion that we're not going two feet higher with the roads. They can't go two feet higher there with the roads. And we're sure as hell ain't putting another Seventy-four thousand into it. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion uh, that we're going to be telling uh, the Daniels Construction Company that uh, the town of Newfane is not going two feet higher with the roads, uh, and it's been seconded. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, that's it. It's. Uh, enjoy writing that letter. <laughs> How fun. All right, I think we are now ready to do payroll. Thank you.